Megan, Hillary Clinton and her campaign have repeatedly refused to release the transcripts of her speeches, and political analysts say these leaked excerpts are likely the reason why, including where she apparently called Bernie Sanders supporters a, quote, bucket of losers. They come from some 2,000 emails hacked from the personal account of top Clinton aide John Podesta, none of which have been confirmed, mind you. They show Clinton campaign researchers trying to flag Podesta about quotes that could be politically damaging. For example, one that says Clinton admits she's out of touch. Referring to a speech she made at Goldman Sachs where she talked about her middle class upbringing and went on to say, quoting, so I lived that. And now, obviously, I'm kind of, kind of far removed because the life I've lived and the economic, you know, fortunes that my husband and I now enjoy. But I haven't forgotten it. Another red flag came in 2013, a speech to the National Multi-Housing Council where she said, quoting again, I mean, politics is like sausage being made. It is unsavory, and it always has been that way. But we usually end up where we need to be. But if everybody's watching, you know, all of the backroom discussions and the deals, you know, then people get a little nervous, to say the least. So you need both a public and a private position. The aides also flag comments where Clinton is aware of the security concerns around Blackberries, even admitting that everyone at the State Department was being hacked, even personal emails, quoting here again, at the State Department, we were attacked every hour, more than once an hour by incoming efforts to penetrate everything we had. The emails also entailed comments indicating she supports the Keystone Pipeline, which she publicly opposes. How she favors single payer or government funded health care, how she thinks Wall Street insiders are what's needed to fix Wall Street, and why she supports lowering corporate tax rates and raising the Social Security age. For the record, of the $22 million she made from speeches after resigning as Secretary of State, three million dollars came from wall street so far there has been no comment from the clinton campaign john podesta thinks he was hacked by russians trying to throw the election to donald trump right, the obama administration is moving now to drop all charges against an arms dealer who threatened to expose a plan by then secretary of state hillary clinton to arm anti Qaddafi rebels in libya back in 2011 Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge, live in Washington with that. Catherine? Well, thank you, John. Working with senior executive producer Pamela Brown, we secured the only TV interview with arms dealer Mark Turry. And based on the interview court documents and emails from Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill, Turry makes a compelling case the Obama administration authorized a covert weapons program to arm the Libyan rebels in 2011 that spun out of control. This clip from the investigation first aired on the Fox Business Network. Well, this would come under uh, Secretary Clinton's watch. This sworn affidavit released in May 2015 and obtained by Fox News indicates a covert weapons operation was authorized. Turi's partner and advisor was this man, David Manners. During his 18-year career at the CIA, he served as the top spy in Jordan and in the former Czechoslovakia. Manners stated in his expert opinion, the United States did participate directly or indirectly in the supply of weapons to the Libyan Transitional National Council. That's where I came up with this zero footprint Arab Arab uh, uh, supply chain. And based on this new court filing, the Justice Department has now moved to dismiss the charges against Turi in part because a trial that would happen around the election in November would publicly expose evidence about the administration's strategy to arm the Libyan opposition. The government motion reads in part in light of the court's discovery rulings, the administrative resolution between DDTC, that's a branch of the State Department that licenses weapons for sale, and the defendant and other factors, the government seeks leave of the court to dismiss the criminal matter. This case will now be resolved through a civil settlement which avoids litigation over Clinton's term as Secretary of State as well as her emails. Turi told Fox as part of that investigation that he believes half of the weapons ended up in Libya and the other half went to Syrian groups who are not friendly to the United States, John. Just, uh, email from WikiLeaks show members of the Clinton team saying some offensive things about an important voting bloc, Catholics and evangelicals. The emails are from the hacked account of the Clinton team chair, John Podesta. He is copied in one exchange, mocking the beliefs of Fox News CEO Rupert Murdoch and Wall Street Journal managing editor Robert Thompson. 
Clinton campaign communications director Jen Palmieri writing, quote, I imagine they think it is the most socially acceptable politically conservative religion. Their rich friends would not understand if they became evangelical. As we've been discussing, WikiLeaks released another thousand emails purportedly from the Gmail account of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. Now, over the past few days, they've released over 5,000 and the revelations from today's WikiLeaks email dump. It should make you, the American people, angry and furious. Now, let's go through what they reveal. In one email, while Clinton campaign spokesman Brian Fallon is caught clearly colluding with the U.S. Justice Department during their investigation of Hillary Clinton's private email server, Fallon wrote in an email to several Clinton staffers, including Podesta, quote, DOJ folks inform me there is a status hearing in this case this morning, so we could have a window into the judge's thinking about this proposed production schedule as quickly as possible. Wow, pretty unbelievable. Now, the White House, of course, is denying any wrongdoing, but that's not all. Now, as it turns out, the Clinton campaign wasn't just colluding with the Justice Department. They were also coordinating openly with members of the mainstream media. For example, according to one of the leaked emails, CNBC's John Harwood, well, he gave advice to the Clinton campaign, and he said, I imagine that Obama feels some sad vindication at this demonstration of his year-long point about the opposition party veering off the rails. In another leaked email chain, top Clinton officials are clearly being pressured by the chairman of Univision to hit Donald Trump harder over immigration. And that's not all. The leaked emails also allegedly show the Clinton campaign also had a very cozy relationship with the New York Times and particularly with its reporter, Mark Leibovich, who allowed the campaign to edit out certain Clinton quotes from a 2015 interview. Isn't that nice? Clinton communications director Jennifer Palmieri even told him, quote, pleasure doing business with you. Of course, this is only the tip of the iceberg with other leaked emails showing a staffer calling Chelsea Clinton, quote, a spoiled brat. John Podesta's obsession with aliens, and sometimes Clinton was told when to smile during her speeches. That would be like me reading this to you and saying, hi, how are you? I'll smile now. He is former president of the Haitian Senate. So I want to read to you the emails that we're talking about here, or at least some of them. Um, it says, quote, uh, you need to flag people who are friends of WJC, that's William Jefferson Clinton, of course. This is a senior State Department official who is juggling incoming offers. Um, to funnel assistance from the State Department over to these companies that were going to come in. And she says, most I could probably ID, but not all. This is an FOB with an exclamation point. An aide forwards a note later with a woman's uh, offer for medical supplies. If she is not, she should go directly to CD, CIDI org. This is the you know, regular government website, the way other people would enter and make bids for these products, but if you were a friend of Bill, you could come in and what we learned later was that they were not competitively bidding for contracts, that they were just given these contracts. And in some cases, there was outright fraud of these people who came in through the Clintons. What is your opinion of that? And, and what did that do to the Haitians that were so desperately in need of help? It has entirely crushed Haiti. Uh, in 2010, we had an earthquake that killed 315,000 people. That's really a deadly earthquake, and millions were left without shelter. President Obama named Bill Clinton as the one that who should be in charge of the reconstruction of Haiti. And in that process, the Clinton Foundation, through U.S. taxpayers' money, and people giving money worldwide to the Clinton Foundation for relief effort to Haiti, contributed about 14 point three billion dollars. We're talking about billion dollars, okay? And n the Haitian people has not seen not even two percent of that money. Two percent. Nothing was done in Haiti. Yeah. No, and, and, and the New York Times has investigated this. Lots of other people have and have found that it was donors to the Clinton Foundation that were then given these contracts. And they went exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Exactly, and actually they were given those contracts, they were given millions of dollars from that money, and nothing was actually done in Haiti. Yeah. Uh, Haiti, just like everything the Clinton have done, is pay for play, and they control Haiti, and they have been controlling Haiti since 1994 when they invaded Haiti. Yeah. Myself, I can tell you that back in, 19, in August of 1994, I was 
in, always in contact with U.S. officials. Yeah. And uh, one of the uh, person that came to see me in Haiti and talked to me for about four hours was ex-former Congressman Bill Richardson. And I yeah. explained to Bill the exact situation that was happening in Haiti. A week later, a messenger from the U.S. Embassy came to me with a message from Bill Clinton, offered to buy me out, make oh, me the oh. richest man in Haiti. Okay. I refused. I said, to tell Mr. Clinton I am not for sale. Okay. A week later, my visa, at, at that time I was not a citizen of the United States, my residence visa was revoked by executive order okay. from Bill Clinton. Sir, I, I mean, what the Clinton have done in Haiti is unbelievable, and the American people should know about it. Yeah, a absolutely. We're up against a heartbreak. It's going to cut us mm. off. I hope that you will come back and tell us more about your story, because this is so important. Oh, the foundation definitely. We got said their, their work has focused on helping the people of Haiti in their time of urgent need. Obviously, right. you yeah. Six minutes passed now. We got this just an hour ago, and we continue to go through it. WikiLeaks posted more than 2,000 additional emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign chair, John Podesta. This is the hashtag Podesta file, I think, online. That makes more than 4,000 so far, and we're learning from them that Mrs. Clinton talked about insider information about the raid on Osama bin Laden's hideout with the group of bankers in Canada. What does the CIA think about that? Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harris live in D.C. for more now. Catherine, good morning. Well, thank you, Bill, and good morning. These transcripts released by WikiLeaks show Hillary Clinton gave a speech to a group of Canadian business leaders in November 2013. And during that speech, Clinton reveals details of the 2011 raid that killed Osama bin Laden. Clinton specifically discusses sources and methods, which appears to be a violation of national security. Clinton tells the business group that an intercepted phone call was part of the intelligence trail that led to the al-Qaeda leader's compound in Pakistan. The transcript reads in part, quote, the people People who were the analysts and collectors and good old-fashioned spies who were gathering bits and pieces of information, some of them from cell phone conversations. He has just made a phone call. He said, this is the phone call. We need to figure out where he is. Then we need to follow him. And that is how we found this compound in Abbottabad. A former intelligence officer said Clinton's team showed no respect for classified information and the investigation did not hold them accountable. Well, special operations, operational security is paramount, uh, and one of the things they see is um, a lack of integrity uh, and a lack of discipline on the part of those who have looked into the incident. Asked by Fox News if Clinton's discussion of the bin Laden operation was cleared, that's a standard step for discussing classified information in public. A CIA spokesman said they had no comment on her speech or her claim that a phone intercept played a role tracking down bin Laden. Uh, is there a double standard in that, Catherine? Well, on its face, it does appear to be a double standard. This was a paid speech by Hillary Clinton. And the U.S. government recently took legal action against the author Matt Bissonnette. He's the former Navy SEAL who wrote about the mission in his book, No Easy Day. Bissonnette has now been ordered by a federal court to pay the government nearly $7 million from his profits and in exchange, a criminal investigation into the unauthorized disclosure of classified information is being closed. The CIA would not say whether similar action is being considered in Clinton's case, and the Clinton campaign is not commenting on WikiLeaks 